So this is the base half of the Televideo uh, 912C monitor. I've removed the pins and the, hinge, hin the pins and the hinges back here where the top of the unit with the CRT folds up. It, it's very ungainly and I've just removed that entire top surface. We've got the main logic board here. Uh, again, this is really hard to get everything in shot. We've got where the keyboard sits down in here. And of course the ribbon cable. Uh, the original ribbon cable. Oh no, that's not the original. Where's the original? Right here, the original ribbon cable, which I somehow damaged in the original work that gave me so much confusion, and then just a ribbon cable I found in my stash of reclaimed ribbon cables. Though it's longer, it was the right number of pins and fit just fine, but what I really want to do here is pull this logic board out, and just so I can clean it, and also clean the inside of this case. Uh, I did some kind of initial cleaning, wiping the dust I could get out and stuff out of it. But it's just really nasty and gnarly down inside. And I'd love to clean the board, get it looking as nice as I can, and clean the inside of the box. I've just decided I want to go ahead and do that work. Uh, some things... Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think this comes up and plugged into the monitor. Actually, there's a sw switching power supply. This reached up and, and plugged into the switching power supply, which was up in the upper clamshell. And this is the connection to the monitor inside. Uh, and of course, the power and contrast. So this looks like it comes off the contrast pot, which makes sense for the monitor. Uh, the fuse, the power switch, etc., are hidden under here, which I'm guessing are connected to here. And I'm guessing this is also bringing back the 5 volts for the logic board and most likely the plus and minus 12 for the uh, serial drivers. Uh, I attempted earlier to remove the screws for the main logic board and the problem is this screw right here stripped. It was really tight and I, I worked and worked and worked trying not to damage, damage it and still managed to damage it. Uh, several of these were in super tight the first time I attempted this. And I just turned them back down in at that point and walked away knowing I was going to have to split the case apart to deal with this screw. There's just no purchase on it that actually gets a hold of it. I think I'm going to end up using the Dremel to cut a slot in that screw head and see if I can back it out. I've tried getting on it with pliers because it's a rounded head. They just slide off. I might be able to get a tight bite. Let's say a small pair of vice grips. But having said that, I don't know where my little pair of vice grips are. As always, the tools are not where they should be. I'll just say it that way. So I really think I am going to try to just dremel a slot in that. So before I do that, I'm going to mask this off as best I can kind of create a pocket to collect the little bits of metal that come off. Just so they don't get randomly up under an IC. Something like that which would be really ugly. something kind of in here with a shot of catching as much off that as can be caught. And I'm assuming I have a cutting wheel here for my Dremel. I guess we'll find out. I don't use the Dremel very much, but I guess there's a cutting wheel. Those are cutting discs. That's a wire wheel. There's going to be a mandrel for this, I'm sure, which should be this guy right here. I think these are cutting discs, looking at them. These are definitely cutting discs. These might be sanding discs. So we've actually got a cutting disc here on the mandrel. 
Now we'll go ahead and try this cutting disc here and see what we get. Let me grab the unit off the charging base, which is of course halfway across the room. It doesn't need to be in the immediate area because it doesn't get used all that much. I don't honestly know what speed is the best here. Now I need the glasses that let me actually see close up. And we'll see if I have any chance of getting a little slot cut into that. I want to get good purchase with my elbows everywhere. Pretty good slot. See if I can get a flat blade in there. Ah, oh, I got it. Excellent. I don't do that very often. Oh, well, that's actually got a uh, uh, brass insert molded into the plastic, which is really nice. I'm going to stick another piece of tape down in here just to capture as much of the little bits of metal we cut off. I can actually see them scattered all the way up high there, so I did shoot stuff much further than I wanted to. I'm going to immediately just use some tape to mop that up. Like I said, this board will get cleaned. I mean, we'll probably take isopropyl alcohol to it. out of here. Turn the meter off, which is sitting there making noise. Get all the screws captive. Well, that's really nice. There's brass inserts under these. That's just a sign of better build quality. PCB to me looks very very typical of the era. We'll be able to get some date codes here uh, in a minute. Come on, release. And we have a logic board removed. Ah. Oh. I see now what I was seeing under there that I wasn't sure what it was. Massive transformer. That is a massive transformer. That's got to be the 110 220 switch. Of course, the speaker. The contrast pot. Actually, both of those. That's interesting. What? Huh. This one, the brown and white wires go to the two outsides of the uh, potentiometer. And then the blue, or the black, orange, white here go to it. These three, with or the yellow being the center. And then a green that's probably some kind of ground. There's a large resistor coming from the power switch. Over there, that, that's interesting. I'm not sure what that's meant to be. And of course, this is just all the taps off the transformer. So I thought that was a switching power supply looking at it. I realize now, based on that huge heat sink, it's actually a linear power supply. Just didn't occur to me looking at it up in, in the top half. So uh, no idea what that bolt's meant to hold. Oh, don't fall. I don't want to drop that logic board. 
This will facilitate getting this cleaned up much better. I probably won't remove everything out of here as much as just uh, brush and wipe everything I can out. Uh, there's openings in the sides of these stiffening rails to allow airflow through. There's a grill on the top of the monitor for the hard air to escape. There's a screen inside of that grill that's come loose and actually hanging down into the monitor. I noticed that a minute ago while I was removing the hinge for the top. So that'll need to be addressed. Uh, I don't know if that if that grill is metal or not. I don't want it falling down in and causing arcing or shorting or anything. Uh, and of course it's allowing dust through because it's loose. Uh, you know, Peeled off about halfway. No, really nice. Uh, the brass inserts. I guess I guess I knew there were brass inserts for the keyboard. I don't know why I would have assumed there weren't for the logic board. Uh, you know, the uh, strain relief on the power cord definitely does the business. Kind of exactly what I would expect for th this era. So let me set this out of the way. Make sure we're recording. And of course, all the hardware we've pulled is collected here and safely stowed. We'll set this aside. That assumes I can find a place to set it aside. And we'll bring back the logic board. Actually, I'm going to just make sure any bits of solder or, or anything are brushed off the surface down here. And this is an anti-static work surface. dig back to the good glasses which I just set down and of course they instantly vanished when I set them down because that's how glasses work holy crud they really did vanish not in my pocket sometimes this is just a complete mystery to me how this isn't them. How the world works this way. This isn't them. Although it gives me a pretty close focus. Let's take a little closer look at the logic board and see what we've got. So I don't know if this will come into focus. Well, there's dip switches along the back here. Boy, these are grubby. They need to be cleaned. Uh, this one sets the baud rate for the terminal itself. This one sets the baud rate for a serial printer that can be plugged in here. This is actually plugged into pins 2 and 3 on the terminal itself to act as loop back. Uh, this one sets parity, stop bits, those kind of things. This one I believe sets whether it's a uh, current loop or RS-232. Very typical looking board for the era. Oh, interesting. It's silk screened on the bottom. Very nice and clean down here. The soldering is very reasonable. The uh, connector there could be a little better soldered on. That's actually pretty. I may touch those up. I may touch all of the external connectors up. They're all a, a little light on solder. We've got an 8035 here, which is an Intel 8-bit uh, microcontroller, so that must be the heart of the system, the 8035, is the processor. Uh, I'm guessing this SMC part here, 11th week 1980, is the UART itself, most likely. I believe the TMS9927 is a video controller. That would make sense. And the 8332 here has got to be the ROM. Well, probably character generator, actually. Probably character generator. That part seems really familiar as a character generator. The code's probably programmed into the 8035. I believe this series had internal ROM, whether it was mask or fuse link or whatever, I don't know. Actually, another EA part over here, 8316. So one of these might be ROM, 
on the, uh, the uh, other one uh, you know, one video ROM and one system ROM I don't know I'll have to do a bit of research I should have of course I didn't know these part numbers until we really got this open date codes 23rd week of 1980 there's a copyright notice for 1978 here there is silk screening on the top of the board. It's in black, which I really hate. But it is what it is. It's hard to see. Uh, I know it's got the potential of an alternate character set. I don't know if that's built into the current ROM or perhaps that's what the socket's for. You could have two pages of RAM. I'm guessing the four empty sockets here are for the second pages. These are TMS 4045 250 nanosecond. 10th uh, week at 79. So it's some kind of a small, most likely DRAM, although I don't know that. 250 nanosecond parts. Uh, I believe this is a bus transceiver. Eighth, that's part number, where's the date code? 15th week of 80. So the manufacturing date on this is going to be probably mid to late 80. Looking at the day codes, 18th week of 80, 45th week 79. I'm kind of looking for the latest date code I can find. There's a lot of 18th week of 80. Stock didn't. Oh, here's some 2112s or 2111s. So those are some RAMs. Those, I bet those are the RAMs or additional RAM for the 8035. Again, I don't know this architecture well enough to really know that. I just know it's in that microcontroller series. You know, the 8035, the 8050, I think, the 8049. There was a bunch of those. Twenty second week 80. 14th week. I think that 22nd week of 80 is the latest date code I've spotted. Uh, which means this was probably, well, this would have been most likely manufactured after that. That part has not been replaced. Again, it's hard to tell from the manual markings on things. 2807056. It's Rev H of the board. It's marked in a couple places of Rev H. It's Rev H. So I'm guessing manufacturing date is going to be mid to late 1980. Uh, just based on that. that uh, latest date code, you know, there's a 555 here, date 16th week of 80. Very typical construction and design. We've got traces, the majority of which are running this direction. If we flip the board over, we will notice they run side to side. That's really common uh, for stuff of this era. Yeah, you're running horizontal on one side and vertical on the other. Not 100%. You know, the vast majority of the traces, it was just a, a very logical way to lay this kind of stuff out. This part has been replaced, most likely, looking at the flux on the board and the solder. And I believe it's an opto-isolator. I believe there's two opto-isolators there. So there has been a bit of rework here. Part number is H. 11 G3 maybe or GE017 being a six pin dip most it's almost always a, an opto isolator so there's been some rework there so it's been repaired at least once or possibly in the factory that part was replaced uh, you know it could be either way but there's definitely enough flux and a little shinier solder uh, then the wave soldering left for that part. Don't know if it was a field repair 
or like I say, a, a, a manufacturing repair. Not a bad looking little board for the era. Assuming I can figure out what these two devices are, uh, I'm guessing they're both ROMs. Uh, though I don't know that for sure. If I can archive uh, the contents, I will do that. There's, you know, so I'm going to call it pin rot, some very dark pins. On the UART, I believe I have a couple more of these COM2502 UARTs. Uh, you know, in my old parts collection. You know, Televideo very quickly moved into uh, PLDs, you know, more features. Uh, but simpler hardware designs. There's a resistor network here of some sort that's probably just a bank of pull up resistors, although looking. Oh, there, there's the sediment like that. Hard to say, but I'd guess that's just an early uh, resistor network. Yeah, it's RP2, so resistor pack 2. It kind of says, oh, there's more of them down here. There's three more down here. Uh, it's got a few electrolytics on it. I will, uh, I think, actually pull these, although I can supposedly test them in circuit. Well, I'm curious. We haven't actually used my new bit of test gear yet. So what the heck? Let's see if we can test some capacitors here in circuit. Best bet. Try to get to these from underneath. If there's enough lead. Tool's really nice in that the polarity doesn't matter. It's analyzing. 24.10 ohms ESR of almost an ohm. Can I get you to bite on there someplace? Am I going to have to just hold you in place? Actually, I can grab you on that pin right there. Hopefully that's somewhat in view. Pretty similar, just under an ohm, ESR, and there's one more. Sitting over here that's going to be a little tricky to get on. I'll have to just hold the alligator clips. This may be uh, issue in circuit, causing it not to measure. So it's seeing 0.68 ohms, and it's failing to actually measure the capacitance. As it says, it's in circuit or it's leaky. Uh, definitely on a power rail. So I may pull that and test it. I may just as a matter of course replace those. Very common parts, 22 microfarad, 16 volt, 16 volt, 22, and I'll bet this is the same. Yeah, 16 volt, 22. Uh, again, that helps keep their build of material cost down because they're you know using the same capacitors. The capacitors I'm more kind of concerned with are the ones in that that linear power supply. I will have to remove it at some point and give it a look. But this is, oh, that's a one microfarad 50 volt. Yep. Since we've got the meter out here, let's see if we can give it a little squiz. Open circuit or low capacitance. One microfarad, 1.83 ohm. And I don't honestly, I just don't feel with ESR enough to have a feel for those. Those do seem reasonable to me. 22 microfarad, 16 volt. 
See, they're, they're saying 7.5 ohm. Lower ESR is better. And the question becomes, is it measuring so low because it's in circuit? And of course, one microfarad is off their scale here. I'd say these aren't unhealthy, especially if that says, you know, 7 ohms is, it, it, it is a typical kind of measurement there. I don't know if you got a view down into the labeling here for the RS-232 and serial printer. Of course, they're DB25 connectors, really common. Uh, you know, from back in the day, uh, the meter just turned off. Got the copyright notices down here. Copyright 78, copyright 78. I wonder if they're trying to mark the two ROMs as copyright. Now, I don't know that there's much more we can look at here. Uh, and say so this will take some work with cotton swabs and a soft brush and just get all of this grease and nastiness off, see if we can get the board looking a little nicer and all this dust off of it. Uh, you know, I will either record that in a future video or we'll record the final product. Not sure yet, but uh, this has been long enough. For a look at this, uh, if you got this far, I appreciate it. And we'll talk soon.